Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel. So I know it's a strange background, but um, I'm actually in Wyoming and on vacation, but I wanted to post this video for you. But before I share this video, I wanted to um, tell you some really important tips. You are going to learn all of the steps in this video and also in nursing school and also on the job as a nurse, especially in orientation. And one of the biggest problems that I had when I was trying to learn how to start an IV was um, gaining confidence and being scared that I was going to hurt the patient. So I delayed my own starting the IVs unless I knew it was like an absolutely super easy person for a very long time. So I really wanted to tell you just to, you know, develop the courage to be bold, um, follow the steps and, you know, to try. The only way you're going to learn is to try. I'm extremely good at IVs right now and that's because I, you know, force myself to try. When you do it yourself, you'll learn the certain things that uh, you need to know to find the vein. You'll learn which um, needle gauge that you need to use, whether it's a 22, 20, 18. So you'll really learn those things only by trying. One of the reasons that I got held up when I was first beginning was that I was scared I was going to hurt the patient. And you know, then I finally just said to myself one day, I was like, you know what, it's gonna hurt my patient more if I don't focus and um, just focus on doing the best that I can for them and getting this IV the first try. Because it's gonna hurt them even more if I'm nervous and timid and don't do my best because I'm scared I'm gonna hurt them. Well, I'm already gonna hurt them a little bit, but it's gonna hurt them even more if they can't get the fluids or the medications that they need. So just focus on the benefit that you're giving the patient instead of the initial small harm. That's what helped me a lot, just get over that hump. So anyways, I really hope you enjoy the video. I hope it helps you out a lot. If you wanna see more videos like this, give this video a thumbs up. Also, if you wanna see some pictures from my vacation here in Wyoming, um, also give this video a thumbs up and I will post them on my Facebook page. Uh, you can find the Facebook page by just googling Empower in Facebook. I'm going to be posting videos every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So anyways, I'll see you guys soon. Love you. Bye. So the first thing that you want to do is clean the skin area off with your chlorhexidine swab. You're supposed to rub vigorously for like, you know, 30 seconds or so and then let it dry for about two minutes. It does take literally two minutes to dry. While it's drying, you can prepare the other items. So here we have the extension tubing. This particular one comes with a cap at the end, so I'm gonna take the cap off. Then I'm going to prime the tubing by taking a flush and pushing the water through until it comes out the other side. And as you can see, it's coming out the other side right now. Now we're going to tie our tourniquet, and this takes some practicing, it really does, but um, you want to tie it tight but not too tight, just enough to make the veins kind of stick out a little bit. Then I'm going to take my needle, which is an 18 gauge. I'm using an 18 gauge, which is the green one, because this mannequin arm is really hard to get through. I loosen the plastic around it because it does kind of get stuck. And now here I'm showing you the bevel. So the bevel is down and now the bevel is up. You want to insert the IV with the bevel up. So as you can see, the bubble is down here and the bubble is up there. So you want to make sure the bubble is up. I usually use on the floor either a 20 gauge, which is pink, or a 22 gauge, which is blue. But like I mentioned, to get through the mannequin arm, it's actually really challenging. So I'm using a larger needle, which is an 18 gauge. Select your sight. What I look for is something that is like a hosey feeling. And if I can see it, that's even better. Sometimes I pull back at the skin right there to give the skin a more time environment so that I'm able to insert the needle a little bit easier. Tell your patient to take a deep breath in on the count of three. Taking that deep breath in will help the patient relax. It'll also help their blood vessels relax, hopefully. And begin the insertion with a bevel up. And you want to insert. When you get blood return, then you want to start advancing the catheter, which is the green part. It's a little bit challenging on the mannequin because it's thicker. Now you want to place pressure at the end so that it doesn't bleed when you take it out. Attach your extension tubing. Release the tourniquet. Flush, and then also pull back and make sure you get blood return. Obviously, this is a mannequin. I'm not going to get blood return. <laughs> Clean.
clamp the tubing. And now we're going to secure the IV. So you want to take your tegaderm, place it right over the site. And on the tegaderm, it gives you the opportunity to write the date, time, and initial. And place that right next to it. Take some pieces of tape. So I like to pull two pieces apart like that, so I get two skinny pieces. And I like to secure the catheter, just like so. And just tape it until it looks secure. If it is somebody that is alert and oriented, and I know they're not going to be moving around too much, or I know that they're going to be cognizant of the fact that it's there, I will use maybe less tape. But if it's somebody that might be confused or moves around a lot, um, I might use more tape or even a Curlex to cover it to keep it safe. And there you go.